Welcome to yet another new episode and I am your Lime Rajo before you and today I am with another new poetry and that is Amanda written by Robin Klein. Before moving to the poetry, we should know who is Robin Klein. Robin Klein is a poet basically from Australia and he has focused more on children's literature. Okay, so people you may know, uh, all those, that is one of his famous work. So, in this poetry, you can know, as you can see the title of the poem, Amanda is a name of a teenager whom you can consider to be the teenager or maybe the protagonist of the story. And the whole story revol revolves around this particular girl named Amanda. So, she is a teenage girl. Now, if you can look into the word poetry, you can find the poetry is totally divided into, like divided in the sense, you can find the first stanza, then you can find uh, three lines in brackets as you can see here. This is something called interlude. I think it might be a new learning for you. That's called interlude. Okay, now what is interlude? Okay, if you can look into, I've written down here, first stanza, uh, the part of first stanza A and B. Okay, in the first stanza you can find that someone is giving instructions to Amanda. So we know one thing. Being a teenage, especially a girl, who gives instruction? It's the mother. So over here you can find a nagging kind of mother giving instructions to Amanda. That is quite widely seen in the first four lines. You can consider the, all of these lines to be the first stanza. So first part of the first stanza you can find these instructions are being given. In the second part of the first stanza you can see, the, as I told you, this is called the interlude. So, now, what is interlude? Interlude is something actually which is put in brackets in between the poetry lines where actually poetry, poet is trying to say actually this is the original feelings of the person whom he's speaking about, Amanda. Okay, this is a dream. This is what she's aspiring. This is what is a passion. And this is something different. Mother's giving instructions and the girl's in some other world. So, now we look in line by line. So, it will be very clear. So have one thing in the mind, the name is Amanda, Amanda is a teenage girl and in the poem, the mother is giving instructions to the daughter. Okay, ready? Don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. Stop that slouching and sit up straight, Amanda. So all these lines see the way, don't do that. I think every teenage boy or girl, your parents always have this in particular, don't waste your time in your Facebook, don't waste your time with your mobile, your gadgets, your game, whatever it is. So over here, the same instructions. Don't bite your nails. Actually, we say nails. Nails actually, it shows you confidence. The properly well-trimmed, well-maintained nails actually shows your confidence. We have seen especially few kids always biting their nails. It's because we feel that they are not that uh, confident enough. So over here you can again find that's first thing mother is telling to Amanda. Second thing is don't hunch your shoulder. When you see these girl, people or students who are not interested in studies, you know, this hunch is literally bending down the shoulders. So the mother is telling don't bend your shoulders. Stop that slouching. Slouching is again like sitting down like your shoulders completely down. Okay, not interested. Clearly shows. So don't slouch your shoulders. Don't bend your shoulders. See that you sit up straight. Amanda. So this is an instruction given by the mother. Now we look go more into the interlude. Interlude is when mother is giving instruction. Child is thinking about something else. Amanda is thinking about something else. So we'll see what is that. There is a languid emerald sea. Languid means I've written down the meaning. Relaxed. Emerald sea. Emerald means a green color. We normally say the color green stands for hope. Okay. So over here, the uh, Amanda is dreaming. What is she dreaming? I feel that there is a relaxed, like no one is there to pressurize me. So I'm relaxed in a green, beautiful sea. See the metaphor which has been used over the emerald. Where the soul inhabitant is me. Where the soul inhabitant. Where I am the only person who is residing there. I am the only person in that particular sea. A mermaid drifting blissfully. Who is a mermaid? You know who is a mermaid, right? Half human and the fish. 
So I am the mermaid over there. I am the only mermaid. I am the only person in that particular sea. And what am I doing? I am drifting. What am I drifting? Drifting means basically like you are moving. The movement. If you can see, you might have seen in the olden days cartoon and all. That mermaid, right? Remember the orange hair and all? Yeah. So what is this particular mermaid doing? It's drifting. Moving. How is she moving? Blissfully. Bliss. Extreme joy or happily. This is Amanda's dream. So when my mother is giving instructions not to do certain things, she is in a dream world. I'm sure you can get that picture in your mind. Relaxed sea. And the sea is not disturbed by anyone. So it is like the green color sea. And then what? There's one particular beautiful mermaid just moving very happily. So this is the thing. You know, every teenage, they need only one thing. They aspire one thing. That, what is that one thing? Freedom. Do you agree with me? Yes. Freedom is something what every individual needs. This is the one thing what Amanda also needs. Freedom. This is what is quite widely seen. Now we'll move on to the next stanza and we'll see what is a mother trying to do, what is mother trying to say and what is her dream. Okay? Now we'll move on to the second stanza of the poem. In the first stanza of the poem you have seen the mother is giving commands. In the second stanza there is a small difference. You can see a lot of question marks which clearly says mother's questioning this is actually moving on to the next level like you can find a literal nagging mother okay so we'll move on did you finish your homework Amanda you're supposed to finish your homework and you didn't do that till now did you tidy your room Amanda did you clean your room so you can see the mother's one person just like you have in the military order and things right she wants everything to keep everything to be kept like clean and tidy she doesn't like things to be very bad she wants everything to be in un, imperfect i thought i told you to clean your shoes amanda so again those questions did you do your homework did you clean your room i remember asking you to polish your shoes did you do that so see the way the mother is nagging and the child is just opposite now in this interlude we will see what is she thinking or she dreaming I am an orphan. I hope you know who is an orphan, like where the parents are dead. So in spite, because of her mother being so nagging, she literally feel, I feel that I just don't want parents anymore. I want to be alone. I want to be an orphan. Roaming the street, obviously we know. We just don't roam the street at the age of teenage all alone. So she is one person who is yearning for freedom. She says, I feel that I just want to be an orphan. Roaming the street all alone. I patterned the soft dust with my hushed bare feet over where mother is picking to clean the shoes. Which means the mother needs everything we need and tidy. And over here he's telling, she's trying to say that I just want to uh, walk with the bare feet. And with the bare feet, bare feet means basically without, without slippers, bare feet, just like that. And then what will I do? I play with the soft dust. Can you imagine? That's her imagination. Just walking in the dust. In the street, obviously, we know it would be like polluted and a lot of it's literally dirty. She wants to be there, enjoying her freedom. The silence is golden, obviously, because the mother is giving instructions too much. She feels the silence. That's literally golden. Your golden is the most, you know, the prized position. So she says that silence is the most prized position. So she's trying to say that's the most important thing more than the goal so she's, she's yearning for that silence the freedom is sweet he's saying the the most beautiful sweet is be the freedom and that freedom she's not getting it with the mother so she normally thinks that the time with the mother is literally being in prison if you want to be a free person you need to be an orphan this is what he's trying to see from these lines in spite of telling the word using the word orphan very clearly so we can understand that she is yearning for freedom. She is yearning for freedom which is very very important and every teenage girl when you reach at a point of view you all feel okay I want to be in the college days I just want to enjoy roam about freedom yes but when you reach there you feel no I just want to get married when you get married no no I just again want to go back to my childhood. So no one is actually satisfied with what you have. Everyone are dissatisfied and everyone in the world thinks that they are problems with them. Yes, everybody has problems with them, but although you have a lot of problems, ensure that 
you enjoy your happiness in whatever wherever you are whatever you do okay so here you can find this something called freedom which you completely yearns so now we move on to the third stanza so you get more idea about the matter okay now we move on to the third stanza of the poem amanda don't eat the chocolate amanda remember you're acting amanda will you please look at me when i'm speaking to you amanda so in third stanza mother is again giving instructions telling that you're not supposed to eat chocolate so again actually the mother is not speaking if you can look into all these uh, the past uh, stanza also the mother is not speaking about the real code of conduct she, over here in third stanza she is so worried about amanda's acne what about acne basically those pimples what you have in your face during the teenage so over you can find the mother was giving more importance to the physically the features so don't eat the chocolate and don't see that you have your acne on the face and will you please look at me when i'm speaking to you that again shows you confidence okay look at to a person's eyes while you're talking so the mother is asking please look at me i am talking to you why you want to look down why you want to look somewhere else she is in a dream world that is the reason that's what the instruction is giving in the third stanza so now we move on to the interlude i am rapunzel i have not a care i am rapunzel i don't know whether you are familiar with rapunzel rapunzel is actually a character which was created by grim the brothers and it was actually it began i think in 1812 or 1815 those times like 18 19th century uh, it began this particular thing called rapunzel so in rapunzel story what happened she was taken away when she was very small she was taken away by a witch and she, the witch a uh, witch took rapunzel to a tall tower okay and the, she was all alone there and which did not give much care to rapunzel and she was always inside the tower and now over here in the interlude nobody actually loves to be with a witch but she is telling amanda i would like to be a rapunzel because at least there i'll have my solitude i can be all alone okay that's what she's trying to say i am rapunzel i have not a care life in a tower is tranquil and rare life inside the tower is actually very calm nobody is there and it's quite rare i'm not like another person it's completely different i'll certainly never let down my bright hair what happened to rapunzel's story rapunzel had a very long hair long hair is too long so once uh, she used to lay down her hair outside and you know how like a robber got into a house right with holding her hair so she said i will never let my hair down again telling i want solitude i don't want anyone else coming into my life okay so in this interlude she is trying to say she want to be the rapunzel the princess is beautiful girl and who there although there's no one to care about me i like to be in that particular calm space calm place okay and i would like that i would never let my bright hair down if someone comes up so in that case i want to have solitude i want to be alone so throughout all these three stanzas the poet is again speaking about the freedom which has been earned by the teenage so now we move on to the last stanza stop that sulking at once amanda you can see this amanda is quite dull and all so let's get just stop that sulking you are in a bad mood can you come to a proper mood stop being that in bad mood you're always so moody amanda you're always so what melancholy you're always sad why are you like that be cheerful like other kids anyone would think that i nag you the first thing if i see you person and if you are so dull they might think that i nagged nagged means basically harassed you not physically harassing but speaking a lot or all like what we saw in the previous stanza and the people might think i have nagged you so at least for their sake can you please sit properly can you just move away from your bad mood so on behalf of all these stanza i can see the mother was uh, if someone asked about the character of the mother you can see the mother was quite dominating right mother was quite dominating and that can the reason why the girl became a little moody the girl was not taking any initiative she was less confident she used to bite her nails so girl was actually coming down the mother was becoming very dominated okay this kind of figure can be seen throughout the poem okay so i hope you like the poem now we'll move on to the poetic devices as well as the important questions of the chapter
now we move on to the poetic devices of the poem. The first poetic device is rhyme scheme. I'll put in the description box uh, the last video or the previous video I've told you how to know the rhyme scheme. Rhyme scheme, uh, I told you looking at the last words of every single line. This is the rhyme scheme. A, A, B, A and C, C, C. This is including the first stanza and the interlude. So every stanza is almost the same thing which has been happening. You can see A, A stands for Amanda, Amanda, straight and then Amanda and then if you can look into you can find a C, me blissfully so e looking at the phonetic sound you can see it's c c c that's rhyme scheme of the poem alliteration i told you the repetition of the initial consonant sound yes sir sound is repeats now it's just one example there are more than two to three examples in the textbooks metaphor they use the word emerald c they want just to show that the c is almost green in color so just writing the c being green color they use it's emerald c emerald you know it's a stone Okay, normally we wear for ring and all. That's a green color stone. That's why the poet has used the word emerald instead of green sea. Repetition. Now, repetition and aphora, you should not be confused. And aphora might be a new thing to you. What is repetition? Repetition is basically of the repetition of words. Okay, like throughout the poem, you can see the mother's quiet nagging. So to show this effect, the poet has used the technique of repetition, repetition of words. And that's what Amanda. Don't do that, Amanda. Don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't do that, Amanda. So an Amanda word is repeated. Now, what is an F or I written the definition for you if it is a new thing for you? Repeated use of words at the start of two lines. That is, don't bite your nails, Amanda. Don't hunch your shoulders, Amanda. So don't word is repeated in, at the start of two or three lines. That is called anaphora. So repetition is a word which has been repeated at any point of the line. But anaphora should be repeated at the start of two or more than that. That is called anaphora. So these are the important poetic devices in the chapter. Uh, so please look into it. Regarding rhyme scheme, how to check the rhyme scheme of a poem, I will put the uh, link in the description box. Please check into it. So now we'll move on to the important questions of the chapter. The very first question I have written down here is, is Amanda's attitude a typical teenage behavior justified? Yes, the answer is obviously yes. Every teenage girl actually yearns for freedom. And the same thing what is quietly seen in Amanda's behavior. The mother who is a quite a nagging kind of person, Amanda is actually one person who is yearning for freedom. And her thinking, the way she is uh, imagining, all those kinds of things we can very clearly say it is a typical behavior. You can also state examples like taking out the interlude and giving explanation will be a perfect answer for that question. Second question, what does the girl yearn for? It's almost the same thing, it's the freedom. What picture of mother do you form after reading the poem? Over here, the nagging mother, you can find that the picture which forms from you is actually a dominating kind of mother. Okay, so you can find the mother who is quite dominating and where she yearns for something. And what is she yearning? She is yearning her child to be a perfect figure, which is impossible. Everyone will have their defects. So over here, you can say the mother has got this particular figure of being dominating. So I discussed the stanza wise explanation, positive wise, as well as the important question. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do subscribe, like and share the video. And please don't share with your important friends. Do share with your friends. Until then, see you next time. Bye. Your name is Rijo, signing off.